Hey, how's it going? This is the Hook Butter Leads podcast, and today I have Griffin Rohr, a SEO mastermind that taught me everything I know on the podcast today. How you doing, Griffin? Doing great, Tim. Glad to be here. Griffin runs a very successful small business that's focused on helping people get higher on Google as well. And I don't normally have other SEO companies on my podcast, but for this, I will make an exception. We are going to be talking about wildcard content and how to use it to hit a Google rankings goldmine. So I promise you if, you, if you keep tuned in here, you're going to get a ton of actionable advice on how to get higher on Google and how to scale out your content. So what is wildcard content, Griffin? Great question, Tim. So wildcard content is a strategy that we've coined in order to scale content production. Uh, a concept that I know that Hook Agency has covered quite a bit is the tendency for SEO and content focused agencies to spend a lot of time in the auditing, research and planning phases while producing relatively little in terms of content or optimizations for their clients. And obviously that's not a sustainable you know, ratio. If you're spending too much time planning, not enough time doing, you're gonna end up you know, having the, maybe the greatest strategy in the world, but without execution, you're not gonna get any results. So what we try to do is, is kind of flip that on its head with wildcard content, where we try and condense and spend as little time researching and planning to find those really awesome ideas. And what we look for are keywords in particular that can scale. So a keyword that represents not just one content idea, but potentially represents dozens of content ideas or maybe hundreds of content ideas. So once we find that that little nugget there, that, you got that some keyword, example. Can you throw some examples at us real quick? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think one that's relevant in most industries is uh, what we call comparison content, mm -hmm. where you're maybe comparing uh, one company against another. Maybe you're comparing one method for your business against another. Yeah. So versus, uh, so versus post. Versus. So what you're looking yep. for in, the, in those keyword opportunities are versus. So this this versus that. This versus the other thing. This yep. versus the third thing. You know, you try and find those opportunities where you can scale from just one template, one idea, and potentially get multiple posts out of it. Another good kind of offshoot of comparison content is looking for keywords that contain alternatives, right? So if there's a popular mm. brand in your industry. Again, a popular method in your industry, guarantee that there's going to be customers that are seeking out alternatives. Mm, that's good. Be the authority and guiding them in a different direction. So yeah. uh, those are two examples. A third that, I, that I'll, you see a lot of companies go after that can be really powerful are sort of the, the listicles, the, the list-based content, yeah. where you're just trying to curate you know, the right maybe solutions or resources for your readers. And you said uh, like adjective based lists. So best, newest, like different adjectives that like people are really searching. You know, you search that yeah. way too. It's kind of like empathizing with your audience. How are you searching? Yeah. Best, best is a big term for sure. So best is a popular one and that's or location one focused or location, location focused. focused. Best is going to have a lot of competition, right? I mean, everybody yep. is rounding up and doing the best. So, you know, let's say you sell, widgets, let's just get generic with it. You know, you could have, you know, the 10 best widgets, you know, on the market and that could be um, uh, one article. But if we just take that adjective and see how many ways we can tweak it, yeah, uh, you might be able to write an article about the 10 cheapest widgets, yeah. the 10, um, you know, coolest widgets. Yeah. yeah whatever, yeah. whatever, you know, you just keep going down the list uh, and, and, you know, somebody is going to be seeking that out. Uh, yeah. The other thing you can do, you can layer onto it or do it separately is make it specific for a particular audience. Yeah. Ooh, so that's good. That's good. For, for marketers, for, for teachers, teachers, for working moms, for yep. whatever. You can just keep going and going and going. Whatever segments to, that just represent your customer base, you can yep. tailor the content specifically to them. Uh, a third example out of that is for particular applications. So maybe you're saying best widgets for weight loss or best widgets for, um, you know, driving traffic 
or whatever. Yeah. What is that particular application that that person is trying to achieve? And so you I can see this. already from there, we've spitballed and come up with 10 different articles yeah. out of one sort of keyword template. That's what we're going for. That's, that's beautiful. And it's kind of crazy because I bet you a bunch of people are listening to this right now and have already 10 ideas uh, for their themselves. Probably grab a piece of pa uh, paper and a pen for this one. We got more, but um, you know, I want to talk a little bit of background here. Why do people often see one cluster of keywords ranking and then immediately move on versus mining where they found gold? So there's this tendency we're always looking for new, new, new versus mm -hmm. why don't we see here? There's a pattern. We've got two or three pieces of content over here that are in that, you know, that, that essentially that um, wildcard content style. And then we we're like, all right, let's start over here again. Let's just start new versus just like scaling that. Why don't people do that more basically? Yeah. I don't know if it's that, that is a tendency to just go after the, the next thing. Yeah. Um, but I, I think what it generally is, is if you're not in your mind out there hunting for a scalable content opportunity for a wildcard content opportunity, you're likely going to look at one keyword as one content idea. Yeah. So if you find 30 keywords, that's 30 content ideas. And that's just kind of the mode your brain is in. Yeah. Uh, if you kind of flip that switch and think, you know, what I'm going to do is trying to, I'm going to try and find keywords that can scale into potentially dozens of content opportunities. So that's starting that mindset, way. Yeah. Yeah. I think if that's your mindset going in. These things are going to become really apparent to you as yeah. you begin researching. That's amazing. I think it's just, a, that's a big shift. That's a really good reframe for SEOs and, and small businesses um, and growth oriented businesses. Trying to get used to saying growth oriented instead of small businesses. Cause some of the people that we're working for aren't small anymore. <laughs> um, but uh, what are tools or techniques that you found uh, for finding these wild card content things? Like how, how do we, um, are there any tools that you've seen work really well? I think I read an article and it was kind of showing some, I think you had like mm -hmm. search operators in Google that are, are one way to do this. Yeah. So I think the best and most efficient way is, is one that's available to anybody, which is pull up, you know, the Google search engine and just start typing what you, what we've all experienced is that Google will autocomplete your search. You know, it'll try and guess what you're trying to, trying to uh, ask so that you can just hit enter. Uh, what you want to do is pay attention to what Google's filling in. Yes. Uh, and you, it'll often give you, you know, 10, 10 or more results, right? You know, if you just start typing, what are, it's just going to start filling in after that. So that's what you want to pay attention to. Uh, and you can just have as much fun as you want doing that. You know, asking what, asking why, when, can, do, are, you know, just, start, you know, plugging in all these, uh, you know, uh, phrases and questions that are relevant to, to your audience, relevant to what you sell or what you do, and just see what Google populates. That's awesome. Uh, where does that data come from? That data comes from search activity. So it, it comes from things that people are searching. Yeah. Uh, and what's great about that is that those are the types of things that probably aren't showing up in, in keyword tools that many SEO agencies like us pay for. Uh, yeah. because you know, they're not maybe hitting a certain volume threshold, but I think that's where you want to use your intuition and say, oh yeah, I've heard a customer ask that before. Why don't I have a piece of content on that? Yeah. And here are 10 different variations of that keyword that I can answer questions on and, and capture potential customers, uh, through that content. So that that's the number one tool. And that's my favorite. An extension of that is when you do search something. Just scroll down the page a little bit, scroll down the search result and try and find the people also ask box. That's gonna give you other variants mm -hmm. of that question, other you know, ideas along the same theme that can be their own content ideas or can feed into a, uh, you know, the, the content idea you're already pursuing. And then there's a couple um, free tools. Uh, Answer the Public is a great one where it basically does everything I just told you. It'll just expedite some of that. So it'll kind of auto search all of those things and spit out a big list of keywords. But I don't think there's any substitute for just going into the search results yeah. and typing these things out yourself yeah. and seeing what Google auto completes for you. I love that. Yeah, I, 
I basically did the smallest form of keyword research ever the other day because I was trying to knock out something quick. I gave something away as a prize at a conference and uh, and it was like a really cheap SEO. Like, here's I'm going to get you some links quick kind of thing. And it was like I was just trying to, like, you know, have a have a prize. Um, and I did this like using that auto, you know, what it shows is the drop down. I could tell very quickly what the like higher because it was like a, it was an area where there wasn't a ton of volume for this city name roofing, but I could tell that they were searching by county apparently, because mm -hmm. as soon as I put that city name roofing in, it popped down with like three or four suggestions about this county roofing. So I know people are searching that way because um, it was related. So it was like a really, I didn't have a ton of time to go in and do like our normal keyword research, like heavy duty thing, but like having those like four suggestions around the county right away. I know that's how people are referring in that area. I don't even have to talk to the client. The client might not even come up with that idea quickly, but it just, and it's just funny. It's funny how much, yeah. like how much more time you and I spend on Google search results, just poking around and seeing mm -hmm. like, like it's a really useful thing. And it's like, it's a big chunk of like our job, like our jobs as SEOs is to understand that first page on and Google and it, it's, you know, like we've all come to terms with how much of it is cluttered with ads and extra junk now these days. So we just, we got to figure out how to play within its rules. And that's like, I think that that's exactly what you're saying with the people also ask, ask box. We're actually able to basically mine all those extra, all that extra junk that they put out there uh, and mine it for good ideas. Yeah. And, you know, often too, there's, when you're mining the people also ask boxes or using Google autocomplete, often you're running into more longer tail content opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, certainly ones that, you know, are going to make sense for your business, uh, yeah. but ones that might not show up on, you know, the, the big keyword tools out there. And so uh, the benefit there is, you know, even though the audience may be smaller, it might be more targeted. And then the search results are probably going to have less of that junk that you're talking about, right? There's probably going to be fewer people advertising on that. There's yeah. probably going to be fewer features by Google that are trying to absorb the volume and take it away, you know, for themselves and, and yeah. direct that away from your website. So uh, it's a great tool, uh, you know, because you're able to tap into some ideas that you might not otherwise find. And, and for us as, you know, SEO and content agencies, you know, operating on behalf of our clients, we're not necessarily or, or hardly ever the people speaking directly to our clients' clients. So the Google autocomplete, the people also ask boxes can be a little bit of a window into what their customers are asking. And we can say, hey, mm -hmm. this came up in our research. Are, are customers asking this? And they say, oh, every day. It's like, yeah. okay, well, let's, uh, let's, Let's put that on the website, you know? Um, those are often those overlooked opportunities that, that, you know, can give you the edge against the competition. It's also not a bad thing, like with those people also ask things like for social, like I just put a, like I, I, there's a people also ask box on our Minneapolis, our beloved Minneapolis SEO page, uh, search result page. It was just like, is the, is the SEO industry dying? Is that the question? And uh, I just like answered that question in detail on LinkedIn and it's gotten like 130 reactions and shit because people like, it's like, these are subtopics of the key topic of what, you know, sometimes Google knows us better than we know ourselves, unfortunately. <laughs> Scary, but yeah. also true. No, that is true. And I think sometimes having that awareness to actually identify questions like that that are being asked yeah that maybe you're getting asked all the time but when it comes down to you being like okay i need to think of content ideas for whatever reason those never get onto the page uh and so without that awareness of of looking at these different sources of listening to your customers oftentimes you're just blowing right past really good and engaging content opportunities yeah. in favor of like Oh, an attractive keyword. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I think the best part about mixing social with SEO is like, 
you get a little bit more direct feedback and it doesn't like, for instance, and that that's probably like a really is SEO dead is probably like way too competitive of a keyword for me to rank quickly on. Although I did rank like in two days for is SEO a dying industry, by the way, it's not, uh, it's, <laughs> it's tripled in the last 10 years. Uh, so that's the quick answer to that. But, um, it, uh, it does well on social, even if it is a really competitive keyword that SEOs wouldn't normally go after. And I think uh, that's that's important note too. Um, have you seen, how have you seen people scale out content production within their team? I think that coming up with a lot of topics is um, extremely useful. Like, and I know you guys have some bigger clients where it's like, how much of that, like how do people scale out content production basically internally? Yeah, uh, th that's a really good question because uh, what we're talking about here is a strategy where you can invest a little bit of time planning and get a lot of production out of it. But then, you know, once you get into production, you gotta you gotta be efficient about it. Um, as far as how we, you know, keep that streamlined, keep the content getting produced in an efficient manner that you know, maximizes our clients' budgets are, you know, there's, there's a couple of benefits. So from that single con, you know, keyword that, that ultimately yields you, let's say 25 content ideas, uh, you can create a content outline that you can recycle 25 times. So again, instead of having to go back to the whiteboard for each possible content idea and, and dream up a new outline, you can use the same content outline or content brief and pass that on to your copywriters. Yeah. So they're seeing something that's familiar to them uh, based on what they're working on. And that allows your copywriters to get into a, a rhythm where yeah. they're not getting one content idea and then the next one's completely different. You know, yeah. they're not getting a, um, an opinion piece to write and then a tutorial yeah. uh, and having to sort of switch gears. Okay. I've got to research into that. Uh, you're feeding them basically variations on the same theme, on the same mm -hmm. outline, on the same content brief, and they're able to chug out that content, you know, much more efficiently than if you're just sort of bouncing all over the place. So uh, what do you use for content? You said content briefs in case somebody's curious. Um, do you have like a tool that you use to make those or? So primarily we use, just Google Docs and we have okay. sort of a template in there, but oh, you know, we have been testing a tool called phrase. F -R -A -S -E. Yeah. We, we just, yeah. Yeah. We've been uh, messing with that. And then also I think, uh, damn, what's the other one? I'm not making these content briefs. So I'm sure I remember the other one. Um, we use rank math on a lot of our sites. Okay. Uh, shoot. I'm trying to remember what the other one is. Sorry. Yeah, well, I'll while you think of that, yeah. yeah, while you think of that, you know, so for our team, we generally take, you know, between 60 and 90 minutes to put together a well-researched content brief. Nice. Uh, okay. Before it even goes into content production. So that's awesome. You know, that's, that's awesome. It's also a big investment of time. So if we have a wildcard content opportunity, we can cut down that time significantly uh, by, by recycling the same content brief. The last component that also speeds up everything here and allows you to produce more for a relatively low investment of, of planning and research is the approval process. So yeah. getting clients to approve a piece of content so that you can publish it, you're not going to get any value out of that content until it's published. That's well, true. again, if you're bouncing all over the place, you know, articles of, of, of different types of different lengths of different topics, uh, you know, it's going to probably require a higher mind share for your client to sit down, process it, approve it, or get you any feedback versus if you're saying, hey, we found a wildcard content opportunity, the next 15 posts we produce are all going to be based off the same content brief. The content is, of course, going to vary. It's going to be different post to post, but it's going to be similarly structured uh, and similarly researched. So when they receive it, it looks familiar to them and they know where to look, you know, and provide feedback based on where they had to look and provide feedback on the last one. So that approval process, uh, the time spent there is also cut down. So across that whole That's workflow, awesome. you're finding efficiencies and ultimately getting content live faster and in higher frequency. 
That's a really, really good point. Cause yeah, that's, that's such a huge piece to SEO. Um, content can't do nothing for you if you don't uh, publish it, right? Can't, it, it's not going to get you an SEO result if it's sitting in a Google doc. That's the truth. Uh, so the thing, the tool I was thinking of is surfer SEO. We use that, I think currently for our content briefs, but we've been messing with the phrase as well. Um, do you prefer one or the other? I think, I think we're currently preferring Surfer. I think they keep on adding new little tools and extras that have been useful for our team. And it, you know, we have a little bit simpler. We have we have a little bit simpler clients, I think, than you guys sometimes. Um, so we also have a little bit simpler content, but we have like content production kind of and like approval process. But that has been definitely a pain point for us. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, just a, why those briefs matter and how, you know, investing there matters. Um, I'm going to skip to our last question here. Um, what can, have you seen that can motivate small business owners and marketing managers to recognize the opportunity here and maybe go now, like think what could they do now and what would be, what would be motivating? Um, why is it, what can we say to motivate these guys to go make these wild card content? Um, go go find these wild card content opportunities and to start creating um, groups of them. Yeah. Well, I'd ask you know what are you ultimately after? Are you after a great plan or are you after great results? Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully you're after great results and that can be your motivation. Uh, to, to implement a scalable SEO strategy, whether it's wildcard content, you know, something we've coined, something that we've got a blog article about it. You can, you know, read through it and, and start applying those things, or, or maybe you find something else that works for you. Uh, but, you know, the reality with SEO, we, we know it, it takes time to see results. Uh, that's an expectation that you and I are always having to set for our clients. So if we can find ways to shorten that time between, when we start researching and planning and coming up with ideas to when we start seeing results, that's going to be better for you and me. And it's also going to be better for our clients. So for small business owners, growth oriented business owners, for marketing managers, you know, what I'd encourage you to do is, you know, talk to your, your agency or talk to your internal team, whoever is running your SEO and, and, and content uh, strategy and ask them, you know, are we doing anything scalable? Are we doing anything uh, where, you know, we're getting significant production out of a small investment in, in, in our time? Uh, and if they stare at you blankly, you know, maybe this podcast right now is, is something they should listen to uh, and, you know, take, take that first step towards, you know, getting out of that kind of just staying, you know, in that planning rut and, yeah. and get, get into, you know, yeah. uh, churning out some really good production. Uh, but, you know, as far as like what you can do right now, beyond that, I would just say, just jump into Google and start playing around. Um, you know, again, you know, plug for our, our blog article, if we can sort of link to that from this. Yes, we but, will. We will. Um, there's, just really actionable tips on how to, yep. you know, surface this. So how do you use Google autocomplete in order to, to extract these wildcard content ideas? So yes. maybe give that a quick breeze through, but then go right into Google search and just start yeah. typing and see what shows up. Yeah, I, I can't, uh, we will definitely link to that in the, in the um, description. I can't suggest it enough. Um, if you just want to Google uproar UP, R O E R and then wildcard content. Um, you'll see that article and there's, there's like a couple really, really good methods in there that are fun, that are fun to try. So please go check that out. Um, Griffin, is there, uh, is there anything else you want to just share about like how to, um, get in contact with you guys where they can find you on social? Um, if people are interested in doing that. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty active on LinkedIn. So you gave a spelling, U-P-R-O-E-R. -E Find our company page, follow us. Uh, we post one or, once or twice a week. Uh, we've got our websites uh, and, and we're publishing articles there pretty frequently, a couple times a month. 
Uh, we also have a monthly newsletter called Sear Searchlight. You can sign up for that in the footer of our website. We publish that once per month. And what we strive to share are relevant trends and you know, newsworthy items in the SEO industry that somebody in the position of being a business owner or a marketing manager should know. So you don't have to be like a hardcore SEO technician uh, to get value out of that newsletter. In fact, it's probably best if you're in the position where, you know, your life, your world touches SEO, but it's not your day to day. I love it. Well, I appreciate you joining us. Um, and, you know, and with a little sentimentality, I don't think I would uh, be where I am today without you, sir. I am pretty sure you advocated for me at my first real agency job. So thank you for doing that. And, uh, I owe, I owe, uh, a debt of gratitude to you for sure. Well, well, thank you uh, for that, for those kind words. And I'll say, you know, I'm always inspired by what you're doing at Hook Agency and, and the amount of work you put into spreading the right message. So I appreciate you having me on team. Heck yeah. All right, everyone, go check out Wildcard Content, get into this topic. Let's scale our content efforts in the next year here. And uh, thanks again, Griffin.